So artists create songs, and when you hear a good one, what do you do? Well, you might jump on a search engine and look up their other songs. You might look up their biography, their successes, failures, whatever you can find. Music encourages external connections. So I have chosen a few of my vinyls from my collection of people that I know or knew at one time, and you never can tell. Maybe you know them too. I do hope to interview some of these people soon. For now, it's a handful of people I know who have ventured into the studio years ago. They stood behind recording equipment and they had a vinyl pressed for the world to hear. So I keep some of these vinyls on display in my office and I want to share them with you now. First, Bishop Bob Bartlett. According to his 1970 book, The Soul Patrol, Here Comes the God Squad, Bob Bartlett was born in Arkansas City, Kansas, and while he was attending college, he heard about a man on the East Coast who was ministering to drug addicts. Later on, Bob joined that ministry where he founded and directed the Philadelphia, Pennsylvania Teen Challenge Center. Yes, the Teen Challenge started by David Wilkerson that began in 1960 in New York City. So, Bob has traveled all over the United States and the world preaching the gospel. And I wanted to show you this record of him and his family. After directing the Teen Challenge ministry, Bob moved his family to Sand Springs, Oklahoma. And he and his wife uh, started an itinerant ministry, Sister Ona, who you can see pictured right here, uh, was a gifted vocalist. Bob and the whole family also had a heart to minister, and so the Bob Bartlett Family Ministries cut this album. And it doesn't have the year on it, so maybe I can get that from Bishop Bartlett soon, but I'm guessing that it was the early 1980s. And it looks like their, their daughters, Camwin and Nicole, were featured vocalists uh, with their mother, Ona. And I believe Camwin, who I think her last name now is Day, is an ORU graduate, and Nicole Johnson and her husband pastor a church called Vision Church in Springdale, Arkansas. So, this album has good harmonies, and I think um, that I hear the three vocalists on there, Ona, Camwin, and Nicole. They cover some well-known songs of the decade, like Praise the Lord, made popular by the Imperials, also Father's Eyes, made popular by Amy Grant, and, um, by the way, Amy Grant, I heard that song sung about every other Sunday as a kid for a special. Um, and then on the back of the sleeve, it says that as you hear Dove minister to you on this album, you will be blessed and amazed. You will see how God has bridged the generation gap of the two teenage daughters and their mother and blend their hearts and voices together. Uh, to minister to all ages. There is no age barrier in God's love. So I personally know Bishop Bartlett, the man that you can see right here. And um, he still bridges the gap between the ages in his ministry. And I've never met anyone so driven to spread the gospel through various connections and cultures around the world. He is wonderful. Uh, Sister Ona also recorded a solo album about 10 years earlier called God Did a Wonderful Thing for Me. She went on home to be with the Lord in 2011. I am very thankful to know Bishop Bartlett and to have these two vinyls in my collection. Secondly, Roland Keith. This album is called uh, The Day is Almost Here. And it's by the Keith Brothers, a southern gospel group from Anderson, Missouri. And one of the individuals is Roland. He is a personal friend of mine, and he is a wonderful example of God's love. He pastors a church uh, called Victory Road Church in Anderson, Missouri. He serves as a presbyter and the general secretary for the Church of God of the Apostolic Faith. And I know the other Keith Brothers uh, on this album, Ron, Bud, Ed and Ted. I also knew their or know their sister Carrie. Uh, brother Dave Keith went home to be with the Lord in 2012. So this vinyl has excellent gospel harmonies 
and instrumentation. Ed Keith plays the piano on all of these songs, and he's featured on one track, Side A. Uh, it's the first track called Goodbye World Goodbye. The back of the sleeve says the songs on this album express their desire to make heaven their home and trust it will inspire others to make heaven their home. Singing and preaching the gospel is a real part of their life as the three, David, Roland, and Ted, are ministers. So it's a great album. The Keith brothers recorded this album in Springfield, Missouri at a place called American Artist Studio. And uh, it was a studio that operated in the 1970s and 80s. And there are other artists who used the studio, like the Branson Ball Knobbers, Al uh, Brumley, the Plummer family, and also Russell Newport. The production assistant for the recording studio where they did this was Winnie Swaim. And in 1966, Swaim moved to Springfield, Missouri to serve as a professor of music at Central Bible College. She retired in 1994. Swain composed, produced, and arranged hundreds of songs and recordings in the Christian music industry. And she was in charge of the A&R at American Artist in Incorporated and produced many of the albums. And in 1997, she was inducted into the Assemblies of God Music, uh, music Hall of Honor. And for her accomplishments as an educator uh, and arranger, they honored her for that. So uh, she received many other music and education awards according to the back sleeve on the album. The cover of the picture that you see here was taken at um, Patterson Creek near the home of the parents of these children and uh, the parents were Mr. and Mrs. A. N. Keith. About six months ago I had the opportunity to accompany Brother Roland Keith when he sang one of the songs on this album, Too Much to Gain to Lose, made popular by Dottie Rambo. And I'm so thankful to know Pastor Roland Keith and to have this album in my collection. My third vinyl I want to feature is from a man named Roger Starnes. And uh, Roger is pictured right there. Roger sang and played bass guitar. Uh, for a group called Sounds of Joy. I met Roger about six years ago at Calvary Heights Church in Tulsa um, with Pastor Dan Wiggins. And although I did not get to know Roger as much as I would like to, he was the best Southern gospel and hymnal bass player I've ever played with in a church service. Uh, Roger went home to be with the Lord in 2022. And according to his obituary, Roger started singing uh, when he was about three years old in the cotton fields with his sisters. He loved music, especially southern gospel music, and he played many instruments, including the piano, the, the guitar, the bass, uh, probably others, uh, but Roger played and sang with Gary, Judy, and Charles Brisley in the group Greater Walk out of Tulsa. On this album, Clouds of Glory, by the Sounds of Joy is the name of the group. Uh, Roger played bass, and I think he sang bass too. Uh, but Roger's love for the Lord and his gift of music encouraged me um, every time I saw him. He had a genuine tone with his bass guitar, and he had a kind of foreknowledge about where the song was going to go. This record uh, recording took place at Sword and Shield Records. This studio ran from the 1950s to the 1980s in Arlington, Texas, owned by Calvin Willis and Lou, or Calvin Wills, sorry, and Lou Wills Hildreth. The album includes two original songs from the band. Uh, one of them is called The Second Birth, and the other one is called Clouds of Glory, which is the title track for the album. So my fourth vinyl has a disclaimer. It's Big John Hall, and although I can't say that I technically knew him, I can say that I did get to meet him, and I plan to spend more time with him before he went home to be with the Lord in 2020. Big John was known around the world as a premier gospel singer since the late 1950s with his great bass singing uh for the Inspirationals, the Stamps Quartet, the Blackwood Brothers from 1965 to 1968. Um, he also started a solo career and he recorded many great records, um, including Here Comes the McDuff Brothers with, with Big John Hall, I Don't Know Why, 
if God is dead, uh, I am loved, life in Jesus' name, the light of the word, rise and be healed, many, many more. And he has been featured on many of the Gaither Homecoming videos as well. And he was a member of the Gospel Music Hall of Fame, both as a member of one of the, the Blackwood Brothers, the Stamps Quartet, the Southern Gospel Music Hall of Fame, and the Texas Music Hall of Hall, the Texas Gospel Music Hall of Fame as well, and also he is part of the General Council of the Assemblies of God um, Hall of Honor that they inducted him in. So I want to credit Pastor Charles McGregor from Stratford, Oklahoma for connecting me with Big John Hall. I had a chance to sit down with, with John um, for a while and discuss his exposure to fame with some big names, and after visiting with him, I think the only name that he would like me to mention is Jesus Christ, and I'll just leave it at that. So this album is called The Lord Liveth, and Big John released it in 1981 with his own label. Um, he had John Hall Records, and his record label also released some other artists like Lynn Mink, the Putnam Brothers, and the Living Letters. I am so thankful that I got to meet Big John Hall. He signed this album for me, and I'm very thankful that I have it in my vinyl collection. My final vinyl is this collection of people that I know or knew, and I want to feature a man by the name of Ron Cross. He sang with a group called the Blessing Airs Quartet in Arkansas City, Kansas. Ron lives in Grove, Oklahoma, and he is a great man of God. I would describe Ron as a theological, philosophical, and engineering wonder. He loves the Lord. His, he loves his family. He loves the joy of the Lord. Uh, he's just a delight to be around. And I have searched for this album for years. And several years ago, Ron came walking up to me with this album in hand. And he signed it for me. And several years later, he gave me a second copy. The Blessing Heirs Quartet consisted of Ron Cross, Doug Graham, Don Wood, James Wilhelm, and Joe Weatherman. All of these men have passed away except for Ron Cross. I knew them all except for Joe Weatherman. Joe Weatherman was the piano player uh, for uh, the Southern Gospel Group. The album cover... Uh, was designed and printed by Gilliland Printing Services in our Kansas City, Kansas. The back of the sleeve says, a quartet that is now becoming well known in churches and auditoriums throughout central Oklahoma and southern Kansas is the Blessing Heirs Quartet of our Kansas City, Kansas. The versatility of the group is increased by four of the members being licensed ministers and as a result, of this, they are able to provide both singing and preaching. So you kind of got a double package whenever you got the Blessing Heirs Quartet. When Pastor John Ashley planted a church in Ark City, this group provided the inspiration for the name of the church. Blessing Heights is still located to this day on a radio lane in Ark City. I am so honored to know Ron Cross and I'm very thankful to have this vinyl in my collection. Well, that's all I want to share for now. I have many more records from people I know or knew, but maybe I'll do a part two in the future. So thank you for watching, and until next time, keep putting the stylus down and turn it around. For Lost and Found Gospel Vinyl, I'm Kevin Vogel, and I hope to see you soon.